Hey guys, just before the video starts, a quick reminder that due to the changes to the YouTube Partnership Program, your subscriptions are going to be even more important than before. So if you appreciate or like the content, please subscribe to the channel. The faster we hit the 1000 subscribers, the faster I'll be able to deliver co continuous content to you guys. So now, let's move on to the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. I'm Rick. And today, I wanna to just tell you guys straight out, you don't have to worry, this isn't clickbait. There really is a way to get DDR3 RAM up to 16 gigabytes for as low as $10. And the Miracle product that makes this available, by Miracle, it's a slight joke, it's these adapters right here that you can pick up on eBay for as low as five bucks each adapter. What are they? They are sodium to dim adapters. What that basically means is you can take standard, uh, laptop memory, fit them into these adapters and use them for a desktop system. Once installed, you get something looking like this. And I can confirm to you, they work. There is no problem with them. Of course, you'll have a sort of quality in, you know, quality issue maybe over a long time, which I haven't been able to test, but they've been running for about three months on my test bench systems and I haven't had any problems with them so far. By the way, I know I'm not the first guy to ever talk about these adapters. If you guys follow Linus Tech Tips a couple of months back, he actually covered these. The only thing that I sort of disagreed with Linus on is his conclusion to whether they are worth it or not. From his perspective and the way he looked at it, I can understand that it's not worth it when you take DDR4 sodium memory and try to fit them into these adapters because basically DDR4 memory right now is not readily available in broken or old systems and it's not really much cheaper than just buying straight you know, desktop DDR4 memory. So why have the compatibility issues that sometimes you get with these adapters rather than just buying DDR4 for almost the same price? However, if we go from an ultra budget perspective like we're used to on the channel, for example, let's take this system as an example, which is an 1156 motherboard with an i3 that cost me $35 for the combo. Actually paying between $50 to $60 for a you know, used kit of DDR3 memory, sort of, you know, it, it sort of feels bad because it's double you what you've invested for your main platform, your motherboard and your CPU. However, what I generally do now, since I found these awesome adapters, is you can pick up used or old or even broken laptops. As long as it's not completely destroyed, you can generally recover the sodium memory from them. So, you know, a family member upgrading his laptop, uh, someone who's ready to check out their laptop because it's broken, because it has a cracked LCD or something like that, you can generally, you know, maybe ask them if you can pick up their laptop and very few people will tell you no. If you explain to them that you're, you know, you're into tech and you recycle, I regularly pick them up, no problem. And worst comes to worst, you can even look on the used market because you can find some broken laptops for as low as 10 to 20 bucks. And so 10 bucks for the adapters plus 10 to 20 bucks for the broken laptop. If you can recover the memory, you've got a whole kit for maybe a maximum of $30, which is already half price to what you would have paid for an actual DDR3 memory kit. Not a bad deal in my opinion. So that's why I disagree with Linus because DDR3 now has been used in laptops for over seven years, meaning that there are a lot of people who have laptops that aren't worth anything anymore. So of course, if you go chasing DDR4 memory, no one's gonna give you a brand new laptop because DDR4 has only been current in laptops, I would say for like about three years. No one's gonna give you a three-year-old laptop for nothing. Even a broken one, they'll sell it to you for parts at a premium, like you know, a couple of hundred bucks generally, depending on the model and how much they paid for it originally. But for DDR3, a lot of people value those you know, seven or eight year old laptops at next to nothing, meaning you can easily pick them up. What I can confirm to you is I've tried them out with three different sodium memory kits and they've always worked. So I haven't had any compatibility issues above and beyond, however, the speed and timings. When you use these adapters, you have to be aware that you're not necessarily gonna get the rated speed and the rated timings. So you have to let your system sort of, you know, boot fail. You can try to tighten up the timings a bit and raise the speed a little bit. However, don't expect on every kit to get the rated speed of the sold in memory. But overall, honestly, if you're building a budget system like this, 
uh, you're probably not even going to notice the performance hit from slightly slower memory. You know, overall, if you're saving 20 to 30 percent on your total bill because you get a free or next to free memory kit, are you really, really going to care that you're losing maybe three to four percent performance because your, you know, DDR3 memory is running at, you know, 12, 12,000, uh, 1280 megahertz, sorry about that, guys, instead of 1600? In my opinion, I wouldn't really care, but that's for you guys to decide. But honestly, since I found these uh, this, this, these adapters, I was really pleased and honestly, the channel is now gonna be able to make more builds because I've actually, what I've done is I've swapped out all my personal systems. I've swapped out the, the memory kits in them for these kits from these adapters. So I'll be, have the old memory kits, so you know, some really good DDR3, for some nice budget builds for the channel. So those are going to be upcoming in the next few weeks. I already have three going on the side there, so keep tuned for those. Those, and I hope you guys are interested to you know to try out these kits. If any of you have tried them out in the past, if you've had good or bad experiences, let me know. Because the only thing I haven't you know been able to test so far is the failure rate over time. I've had them running for about three months, you know, so give or take in my different systems. So far, I haven't had any kits fail. I haven't had any overall, you know, major problems other than, like I said, having to adapt the timings and the speed of the DDR kits. Um, so let me, let me know in the comments down below if you guys have had any different experiences. We can share and grow together. And as usual, I hope I see you guys in my next video.